Whether you're a diehard game player or not, there's a big chance you've heard of the computer game Castle Wolfenstein. This game was set during World War II, and the gamer played the role of an allied agent or commando who was infiltrated into a mysterious and forbidding castle in Germany. Inside the castle were rumored to be a variety of German super soldiers and creatures with various deadly skills who were being bred or made by psycho-Nazi scientists. Sounds a little bit creepy, right? What if we told you that the idea behind Castle Wolfenstein was not entirely fiction and even happened in real life? Let's find the horrific truth and history about Castle Wolfenstein. The most infamous of Hitler's troops were under Himmler's control, the Waffen-SS, the military part of the elite unit which began as a personal bodyguard and morphed into the most feared Nazi organization. The SS controlled the police and the secret police, the infamous Gestapo, the extermination concentration camp system, and many of the economic levers of the Reich, and the Waffen-SS, the armed SS, which were the combat troops of the organization. The head of the SS, or Reichsführer SS, the one-time failed chicken farmer, Heinrich Himmler. The chicken farmer phrase was born during an Allied propaganda campaign, and the fact is, Himmler had been a failed chicken farmer in the hard times after World War I. The phrase is still used frequently in regard to Himmler to make him seem like a person who could not succeed on his own, or among normal people, and that might be true. However, it's also an attempt to paint Himmler as stupid and unable to stand on his own two feet without Hitler. Himmler was a lot of things, like intensely evil, but he was not stupid. Himmler joined the Nazi party in 1923 and was involved in Hitler's first attempt at power, the infamous and failed Beer Hall Putsch, later that year. Though Himmler was never one of Hitler's inner circle, which could chat with him about music or art, as an early member of the party and as a veteran of the Beer Hall Putsch, Himmler was among those who rose quickly through the ranks. Very generally speaking, he was helped by three things. One, he was a true believer in Hitler and the German racial superiority espoused by the Fuhrer. Two, he was a brilliant organizer who ran the most feared and pervasive organization in one of the most feared regimes in history. Three, he was utterly ruthless. Sound like a character from a video game or a movie about a supervillain whose headquarters is a dark and foreboding castle? You bet it does. Because Himmler, the man who along with Hitler shares most in the crimes against humanity perpetrated by the Nazis, had his own castle. And he was determined to make it what, to paraphrase, he saw as the holiest of holy places in the Nazi Reich. Adding to the mystique of the place Himmler eventually chose was the fact that it was near the ancient battlefield in the Teutoburg Forest, where the Germanic tribes defeated the army of Rome in 9 AD, stopping their expansion into what would become Germany. By 1933, Himmler had been the leader of the SS for almost five years. Already feared, Himmler would make the SS into one of the most terrifying organizations in world history, and when he told the leaders of the district of a certain castle just south of the central western city of Paderborn that he wanted it, they were of course more than happy to oblige. The Reichsführer and the district of Buren signed a 100-year lease for one Reichsmark a year. Fair deal. This was the castle Wevelsberg, which today is a youth hostel once again administered by the district of Buren. You see, one other aspect of Hitler's personality was mystic. He did not believe in healing crystals and yoga, no, he believed that the Nazi movement, and in particular the SS, was a holy movement which would secure the world for the Herrenvolk, or master race, of Germans. From the early 1800s to the aftermath of World War I, a particular kind of romantic mysticism had grown in Germany, which later evolved into theories about the true nature of the German people and their superiority to all other people on Earth. Himmler ate all that stuff up when he was a young and frail, bespectacled young man whose real dream was to fight on the battlefield and perhaps die for Germany. Throughout his youth, Himmler was fascinated by the secret and mystical religious orders of the past, most particularly the Catholic Jesuits and the Freemasons, which he would later persecute as a secret organization that believed in the worldwide brotherhood of man. Once Himmler saw that these theories embraced by many Germans since before the turn of the century had a focal point and a powerful spokesperson in Hitler, the chicken farmer was hooked. Not only was he hooked, he was determined to be the man who scientifically traced the origins of the German people back to the super race of ancient Aryans, who were said, by believers in this wacky theory, to have been the inhabitants of the fabled island of Atlantis, and who were far beyond normal humans in their intelligence and ability. This theory also included the idea that the ancestors of the Jewish people were the destroyers of Atlantis, and they did this both from within and without. Himmler was determined that this would not happen to the descendants of these Atlantean Germans in the 1930s and 40s. To that end, Himmler founded another branch of the SS, the Ananerva, or Heritage of the Ancestors. To do that, he needed what he deemed a place of power, 
a place which he felt vibrated with the power from the sun, the center of the earth, and the spirit of the pure German race. Did we mention that Himmler was certifiable? Don't take our word for it, by all accounts, Adolf Hitler himself was more than a little creeped out by Heinrich Himmler. He did not include him in his informal inner circle and was said to feel a bit uncomfortable in his presence. Though of course Hitler subscribed to the idea of the German master race and some of its weirder ideas, as strange as it may sound, he was not as over the top about it as Himmler, and often made excuses to leave when Himmler began spouting off on his quash, which is the German word for nonsense or garbage after giving a report. Nonsense was what Hitler actually said about Himmler's ideas. However, Himmler might have been certifiable, but like we said, he efficiently ran the SS, and the SS had already begun to run the country behind the scenes. Der Treue Heinrich is Hitler's name for Himmler, the loyal Heinrich, at least till the end of the war when Himmler betrayed Hitler to save his own skin, but that's another story. So work to restore Wevelsberg to its former glory began under Himmler. The castle had been built, and while in decent shape for a building that was nearly 600 years old, needed an upgrade. Not only was the structure itself strengthened, but the inside was completely redone, incorporating ideas of numerology, German and Nordic myth, and Himmler's own flights of fancy based on his elaboration of Hitler's racial ideas. Who did the restoration work and the building of additional parts for the castle complex? Slave laborers, inmates of concentration camps, transferred for their skills as stonemasons, etc. As the war began and the Nazi empire expanded, more and more prisoners, mostly but not all Soviet prisoners were sent to Wevelsberg, which by then already had its own concentration camp erected nearby called Niederhagen. Over the course of its existence, nearly 4,000 prisoners passed through Niederhagen. Just under 1,300 died at the site. Others who had been there later perished in other camps. Only a handful survived to war's end. A few men died from accidents, most died through the spread of lice typhus, and just under 60 were shot for various offenses. Throughout Wevelsberg were swastikas, the infamous SS and other runes co-opted and misused from Germanic Viking history, and the Black Sun symbol which, like the swastika, was a mystical symbol used for centuries around the world supposedly harnessing and representing the spiritual power of the sun. The Black Sun symbol has 12 backwards-facing SS-style runes. Himmler believed that the number 12, which was the number of the disciples of Jesus in the Christian beliefs of the Jesuits Himmler studied, and which is the number of months in the year, as well as the number of knights thought to be included in the fabled King Arthur's Round Table. Also included in the interior design of the castle was Obergruppenführersaal, the Hall of Higher Ranking Generals, which was a circular room surrounded by 12 pillars, each depicting a hero of the Round Table. On the floor was the Black Sun, and this is where many higher ranking SS officers took their oaths, though it was not used as frequently as envisioned by Himmler due to Germany's defeat. Specific and still secret rites were practiced in rooms around the pillars. Most people believe they were similar to ancient Christian secret rites, or possibly even those of the hated Masons. Adding to the mysticism was the so-called Himmler Crypt, in which the sacred rings of fallen SS men were supposed to be buried, though the rumor has it that over 11,000 rings are buried somewhere nearby. The crypt was actually dedicated to King Heinrich I, who was a great early medieval German king, and of who Himmler believed himself to be the reincarnation. Some of the most elaborate decorations were those on and in the walls throughout the castle. These were depictions of the characters from the operas Lohengrin and Parsifal by Hitler's favorite composer, Richard Wagner, the stories of which are based on and intertwined with the legend of King Arthur. It might be obvious to you now that Himmler believed Arthur to be one of the last pure Aryans descended from the inhabitants of Atlantis. To show you how much Hitler liked being around Himmler and what he thought of some of his ideas, the Führer never visited Wevelsberg and this is a man who worshipped Richard Wagner. As American troops moved in in March 1945, Himmler ordered the destruction of the castle he did not often visit. Within three years, the rebuilding of the castle and the destruction of many of the Nazi symbols commenced. The museum and memorial to the victims of the Nazis was built and which encompassed many of Himmler's symbols was created. The museum and the youth hostel are still open to visitors. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please leave a comment down below about your thoughts and don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel as an offering to the gods of the algorithm and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.